I was led to believe that the Nintendo Switch would launch with a retail sticker of, say, $250. I mean, we're not really talking about cutting-edge tech when it comes to the technical side of things when it comes to the console. And relatively speaking, when you compare this to, say, other next-gen consoles, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, it would be fair to assume that they would want to price their console as competitively as possible. It's no secret that Nintendo does not share the same philosophy when it comes to Sony and Microsoft, and that is that both these companies do not mind taking a hit when it comes to losing some money or even breaking even when it comes to console sales, and that is with the understanding that they will make up for it in the long run when it comes to creating a much larger presence in terms of a user base as well as making the bulk of the profit margins from the software. But back to Nintendo, for the most part, they don't share the same business philosophy when it comes to losing money in any aspect of their business, especially hardware, although it might make sense to do exactly that in the short term in order to remain competitive. I mean, you have to understand Nintendo is releasing this console at a really awkward time. And as much as I hate using the term playing catch-up because Nintendo plays by their own rules, we all know that, you have to respect and understand that these other companies, Sony and Microsoft, has had time to build their user base. And I'm not sitting here saying that hardware is everything, okay? But when you do take a look at the technical side of things, Sony and Microsoft are already making a transition over to more powerful hardware. But before I get derailed from my own train of thought, I just wanted to quickly touch back onto what I was trying to get at, and that was the retail price of this Nintendo Switch, which is 299 US dollars. Knowing what we do know about technology and what it cost, and comparing the Nintendo Switch with the other systems, let's just assume that Nintendo is willing to break even, okay? And it cost them 299 dollars to make a Nintendo Switch. What's the driving force behind that price tag? Is it the CPU? Is it the GPU? No, the answer is the driving force behind the price tag. Why, in my opinion, is $299 is the HD sound technology. If you take a look at how much they're actually asking for these things, well, let's just say I hope that you take good care of your Joy-Con because they want $50 a pop, or you could buy two of them for $70. And if you look at their live stream, you'll see that they put a lot of emphasis in terms of this HD technology. They focused a lot on that. So to me, that tells me quite a bit of effort, R&D, resource management, whatever you want to call it, went into these Joy-Cons, which many people were speculating that maybe $20, $30 tops when it comes to these Joy-Cons. Some people were even making the argument that a pair of them would cost that much. $50 a pop. Nintendo, you're asking people to put quite a bit of faith and money into this HD sound technology which on the surface sounds amazing I'm all down to check it out I'm interested in it but the thing that worries me the most when it comes to Nintendo is the gimmick and if you take a look at the history of Nintendo when they seem to go all in on a gimmick usually they come out the other side a little bit banged up okay now the Wii is an exception to the rule now, I'm not going to go through the list, such as Wii U and the Virtual Boy. I'm just going to say one thing. I was hoping that Nintendo would start to move away from using these gimmicks, okay, and start focusing on the core experience, which Nintendo is very great at creating. That's what I was hoping. Now, look, I know I'm not going to make many friends with this video because it's almost taboo to say anything negative about Nintendo, but I'm not saying anything negative about Nintendo. I'm just talking about how I feel. Somebody asked, so I'm making a video. I was hoping that they'd move away from move controls, okay? But you know what? Not a big deal. What is a big deal, in my opinion, is this HD sound because you're paying an HD sound tax. That's why the console is $299, in my personal opinion. Don't get me wrong, the technology in itself, it's pretty amazing. Okay, but I just think, as far as I'm concerned, and what I'm looking from Nintendo, it's not a selling point. Speaking for myself, it's a cool little novel, unique experience that I would try maybe a couple of times and never touch again, because that kind of thing isn't really for me. And you might be asking yourself, well, how the hell do you know? You have not tried it yet, and that is true. I have not tried it yet. But I know what kind of a gamer I am. I know what I want out of Nintendo, and that's the core experience. Mario games, Xenoblade, Monster Hunter, Zelda. So in the short term, this HD sound might seem like a cool idea. In the long term, it's not going to make or break this Nintendo Switch, 
what it will do is break your bank if in fact you lose one of the controllers break one of the controllers even the charging dock ninety dollars does that have hd sound too ninety dollars for a fucking charging dock so if you're not careful this whole nintendo switch experience can be quite an expensive one is all i'm trying to get at and also again the core experience is what i'm focused on and i personally think that the better the hardware the more you can push your games to do and all i'm trying to say is that if you're focusing now your funds in terms of development cost into this HD sound and that's taking away from that hardware the CPU GPU and things like that that's going to affect the core experience or how far you can push these experiences I should say the gimmicks aren't the things that keep me compelled to coming back to your games Nintendo it's the games itself and I just wish that this time around they would just focus on that but with all that said I still could live with a underpowered Nintendo unit, okay? I would have been more than happy with having this portable console that you can just slap into your charging dock when you're home and play it on your big screen. Like that, to me, is enough. But you have to price it, in my personal opinion, to compete. You have to price it for what it is and what it actually offers. And I don't think that HD sound is going to offer all that much, but it's absolutely cutting into how much this thing actually cost. I think this device would have been $249 if in fact it didn't have all this HD sound technology which again I know it's too soon to dismiss any of that I get it it's quite possible that these truly amazing experiences can be created in the future due to this HD sound implementation that Nintendo chose to go with but I just personally in my heart don't believe that's going to be the case and I just think it would be more appealing at 249 because you also have to factor in that you're going to buy games and things, right? But another thing you have to consider, if you're a parent and you're thinking about, okay, I want to get this for my kid, but what would it cost if something goes wrong to replace maybe a controller or whatever? They're looking at these Joy-Cons priced $50 a pop. I mean, that's not very appealing, let's just put it that way. Of course, I also have to say that there's $70 for a pair, but that's still expensive as fuck. $90 for a charging dock. I think this little partnership they had with Apple might, <laughs> might have created a monster. A couple of other things that raised my eyebrow. One thing is that you need an app on your phone in order to use social elements such as chat. Whose idea was this? I mean, seriously, here I am. I'm playing the Nintendo Switch in-game pad mode and I want to invite a friend or chat with somebody to the Nintendo network now you're asking me to juggle two things at once I just want to play your thing I want everything to be on that thing the more things that I need to use in order to get the entire experience I don't think that's something that a lot of people not just myself are necessarily looking to sign up for People tend to just want to take something out of the box, plug it in, and be ready to go. Also, you're assuming that everybody has a smartphone. I know it's 2017, the majority of people do. But just like with the PlayStation 4, how it offers an application, I don't use any of them. I want to just play a video game and have everything built into that video game in terms of whatever I need. So you're charging for a network service. I know it's going to be free at first, and then you're going to charge later. But you're going to need external devices to fully... I mean, am I getting this wrong? Hopefully I am. Hopefully we're going to get more information how these social elements are going to be contained in the unit. And you're not going to need an external device. And maybe this whole application side of things is completely optional. And if that's the case, Nintendo, I think some of these things need to be clarified. It is releasing in a couple of months. So if something got lost in translation there, I think it's best to maybe just, you know, take a few moments and clarify that stuff. Because while many of these things I'm talking about might not be a big deal on the surface, underneath that surface there are little, little gripes that they start to add up and this console starts to become less of a knee-jerk impulse by day one at release, which is what you people as a business I assume want. Now I'm starting to say to myself, okay, I can hold off on this. I can see how it pans out. I don't need to buy it right away. Last I checked, I think that they were sold out on Amazon, so I might not even have the option to do so, even if I did want to. I know Best Buy uh, had limited supply, but Walmart 
I'm hearing had a good amount of them, I don't know. I do know you should make a scalping simulator because when it comes to Nintendo products, usually those are the winners, the people <laughs> that resell your stuff. That's all I have when it comes to this Nintendo Switch. I'm just not too happy about this whole HD sound driving up the cost. Although I don't have any clear-cut evidence that that's the case. Everything online in terms of how much they're actually asking for these Joy-Con units reflects that that's exactly what's going on. They're not exactly using cutting-edge technology as far as the console itself, the unit itself is concerned. I just feel that they went all in when it comes to this HD sound and if they would have released this Switch without it, nobody would have missed it, nobody would have cared. More importantly, the Switch would have been priced more competitively the peripherals when it comes to having to replace your Joy-Cons or whatever wouldn't be that big of a deal because these Joy-Cons I'm going to assume would not be as expensive without that HD sound technology. The Pro Controller? Why it is $70? I think it has a thing within it where you can actually tap your Amiibos to it. I think it's an RFID or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, so it scans your Amiibos. But even with that considered, I don't think that technology is all that expensive, and pardon the poor choice of words, but a $10 markup, or whatever it is, in contrast to, say, a PlayStation 4 Xbox One controller, that's not that huge of a deal. But at the same time, it's more expensive. And I'm sorry to say it, but some people like to get an idea of why you're asking more money for your thing. And that's just the way it is. Some people are interested in the technology side of things. They want to get a better understanding of how much these things cost to make and how much they're actually asking for them. And then, like most human beings do, we compare. We compare stuff. Okay, it's just something we tend to do. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's something we do quite a bit. Especially when we're buying things. And I think that Nintendo's could have done themselves a favor and moved away from some of these comparisons if, in fact, they didn't implement this HD sound, if, in fact, they priced their console a little bit cheaper. Especially when you consider that although Nintendo might not be directing completely with the likes of Sony and Microsoft, okay, that they are offering a different kind of experience. I get that. But... The fact remains that these other two companies have had quite a head start when it comes to building their user base. And some people can't afford everything. As a company, you want to convince people to invest in your thing. And I just think there are a couple of variables in play that don't necessarily need to be there. Giving people quite a bit more than they necessarily need to think about. And someone made a good point I was listening to earlier. They were also hoping that Nintendo moved away from gimmicks and move controls and things like that. And it seems that this time around they went all in and built a console around it.